Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Good to have you with us. Florence is one of the most massive and dangerous hurricanes to ever hit this far north, and it's about to hit the coastline of the Carolinas and Virginia. It's the size of Colorado, with winds of at least 140 miles an hour. Some think Florence should be category six as a hurricane, but that category, that category doesn't exist yet. This massive hurricane is about to hit an area filled with nuclear reactors and toxic waste dumps. Most of the reporting on this massive hurricane and others have not mentioned climate change as a factor in either the frequency or the intensity of such hurricanes. Kiran Bhatia from Princeton University recently published a study making just that claim. So while there remains a little bit of a controversy among some climatologists, we'll discuss how the warming of our oceans, a factor created by climate change, is a factor or can be a factor in the increasing intensity, size, and velocity of these storms. We're joined by Dr. Kevin Trenberth, who is one of the world's leading climatologists, who is part of the climate analysis section at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, and was a lead author in 2001-2007 of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change's report, or as we know it more commonly, IPCC, uh, on just this issue. And Dr. Trenberth, welcome. Great to have you here with us on The Real News. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm glad you're with us. And let, let's just start here uh, with a broad question we're not seeing on the news very much in any of the news reports, which is the connection, the arguments on the connection between climate change, the warming of the oceans, and the intensity of these hurricanes. Um, so how can you parse that out for us? Well, humans are producing climate change by mainly interfering with the natural flows of energy through the climate system. So there's a buildup of uh, heat trapping gases in the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is the main one, uh, but there are some others. And these provide an extra blanket. So there's extra heat available in the system. Most of that heat ends up in the ocean, over 90% of it in the ocean. The oceans are warming. In fact, the best single indicator that, the ocean, that uh, climate change is happening is the changes in the ocean heat content. The second best is the rising sea level. So sea level is going steadily upwards. And the variability from one year to the next is relatively small compared with all of the weather that normally occurs. And so we've got very clear evidence that the oceans are warming. The, in 2017, the oceans as a whole are the warmest on record for the calendar year. And for the last uh, quarter that we've got uh, complete measurements for or complete analyses for from uh, April to June, April, May, June, uh, that's the warmest quarter for the global oceans on record. And some of the warmest spots certainly move around from one year to the next. And at the moment, one of the warmest spots is out near where Florence is occurring. And so it's not just the surface, the sea surface temperatures, but also the ocean heat content, all of the warm ocean beneath there that uh, is providing support for uh, energy flowing into the storm. So what I've read, and maybe you can clarify this for me. What I've read is that it, there's a natural process where the, where the oceans warm up that it helps cause hurricanes to take place, that has to do with interaction with the atmosphere. But what's happening with the warming of the oceans at the depth of being the, the, that the warming is taking place, this is what's in causing the intensity of these hurricanes to increase. I mean, it's, it's like a natural phenomenon gone haywire because of climate, because of, because of, because of global warming. Yes, and so the oceans are warmer by uh, more than one degree Fahrenheit since 1970 as a whole, and then you add on a little bit of extra natural variability, and at the moment they're in that vicinity, they're at least three degrees warmer than, than normal. For every one degree, you get about 4% more hold, water holding capacity in the atmosphere. And so in that region, there's something like 10 to 15% more water vapor uh, capability uh, for, for the atmosphere to hold that amount. And that increases the evaporation from the ocean. This pr provides the extra water vapor that gets caught up in the storm and produces heavy rainfalls. That 
the when those rainfalls occur, the heat that gets released that originally went into the evaporation is the actual fuel for the storm. And so this leads to a more intense storm. And over time, the storm can grow bigger. And it did that uh, in an episode last night uh, as the spiral armbands uh, spiral around the storm and then uh, uh, cut off the supply to the original eye to the storm and then the eye grows bigger and these storms grow bigger over time this is what happened last year with uh, Harvey and uh, Irma and Maria as well and so this is another uh, uh, storm in in those kind of uh, categories and uh, the consequences if it really goes slow as it did with Harvey are really prodigious amounts of rainfall. So well, a couple of quick questions here before we conclude. And, and Chris Lancy from the National Hurricane Center um, questions whether or not we really have enough data to say that there's a real direct correlation between um, the uh, warming of the oceans and the intensity of hurricanes, that the models are not, uh, we don't have enough evidence. So there clearly seems to be some differences between some climatologists. Can you speak to that and what, why the differences exist and what do you make oh, of those yes. arguments? Yes, and so there's a tremendous amount of natural variability in hurricanes. Uh, from where they occur, uh, uh, there's always a competition between the Pacific versus the Atlantic. In El Nino conditions, it's much warmer in the Pacific, and the action is all out there, and it suppresses the activity in the Atlantic. Where they occur uh, certainly varies from one year to the next. Last year, uh, the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico was very, very warm, and it led to Harvey and Irma and Maria. But but those storms actually took a lot of heat out of the ocean and cooled off that region, which is one reason why that that area is not as active this year. But instead, uh, we've got this uh, region uh, out where Florence is at the moment that uh, pr that is producing a very intense storm. So this you can't. Uh, deal with it from the standpoint of the statistics because the variability is so large. What we can do, deal with is the overall changes in the sea temperatures and the ocean heat content, and those are systematically higher than they used to be. We can measure that. We can track it over time, and uh, we know the consequences. The consequences are that there's more moisture in the atmosphere, and it provides more fuel for the, for the storms. And so the argument is more from our understanding of the science and how these storms work then rather than from the statistics which uh, you know reliably we can only go back to about 1970 because before then we didn't have satellites and and so we just don't have a long enough record to uh, to deal with the large variability in any uh, basin uh, to, to, to address the questions that Chris Lancy was answer, uh, asking. So then when people kind of question the relationship between climate change and the intensity of hurricanes, how do you respond to that? And how, and how should we respond to that? I, mean, I really want to get well, to the heart of that. Yeah, so the, the real response is that the environment that all of these storms are occurring in has changed. The sea temperatures are warmer. Uh, the ocean heat below the surface is, is warmer. The, there's more water vapor in the atmosphere. And the consequence is that there's heavier rainfalls. And we've got excellent statistics on the heavier rainfalls because uh, you, you know rainfall is occurring all of the time, whereas hurricanes are episodic events. And so we, we have excellent statistics that uh, when it rains, it rains hotter than it used to, and uh, and and hurricanes uh, certainly produce some of the most prodigious rains, and therefore that's the thing to really watch out for in this particular event, the the risk of extensive flooding. And it also seems to me that this particular hurricane, Florence hitting the Carolinas and Virginia, where it may hit, but it seems to be headed towards at this moment, uh, is that's also a place where, from what I've been reading this morning. There are a lot of toxic waste dumps. There are a number of nuclear reactors. Um, and th this, th I mean, this is, could be a very dangerous pattern we're about to see. Well, it could be indeed. And 
you know, the preparation that can be done in in all of these uh, sorts of areas, protecting uh, those areas from being, uh, you know, washed away and uh, as they did actually down in, in Houston last year with Harvey, there was uh, one area that also uh, produced a lot of contamination because of, because of that. But, you know, all of these areas are under this kind of risk and it's really irresponsible that uh, they're uh, vulnerable in this regard. Um, you know, the Navy uh, has uh, sent all of their ships out to sea, as I understand it, to get them out of the risk zone. There ought to be strategies for dealing with this kind of thing. It means that you can't just do it in the one or two days ahead of time. They ought to be uh, preparations for this kind of thing well in advance. And that's the thing which is not happening adequately at the moment. Well, well, let's conclude this, uh, this, this portion of it, because I'm very curious about conversations you and others may have around this particular issue of, of, you know, even if we all of a sudden magically woke up tomorrow morning and decided we were going to end our fossil fuel-based world uh, and move to a cleaner um, energy economy, it would take decades and decades to, to even things out, even come close to it, if we could. So what do we have to consider? Because if these hurricanes continue with this intensity and keep growing, whether they occur in the Caribbean as last year or occur in the, in the Mid-Atlantic as they're happening right now, I mean, what is it we have to begin to think about? Yes, well, so the carbon dioxide that's going into the atmosphere has a very long lifetime. Um, some of it lasts for centuries. And so even if we stop putting more carbon dioxide into the atmosphere now, and you know we're not going to do that, but we can certainly slow it down, which would be beneficial, the carbon dioxide that's already there is going to remain for quite a number of years. So we're going to have to live with the consequences of what we've already done to some extent. That means we need to prepare for it. We need to uh, adapt to it. We need to build resilience and, and, and so on. But at the same time, we do want to stop uh, the, the problem from getting even worse as we go further into the future. So, you know, another uh, 20 years from now, the temperatures uh, may be even a, a lot higher and uh, the risk of uh, what we might call category six storms uh, would be uh, then uh, uh, an annual event. And and so we need to do, the, do both. We need to try and prevent things from even getting even worse, but we also need to recognize that we've already got a problem. Climate change is with us and we're seeing consequences already. So uh, one last quick question then. So there's no question in your mind that climate change is a factor, in, as we know, of warming the oceans, but in the intensity of hurricanes, A. And B, do you think we should begin uh, talking about category six size hurricanes, which some people do not want to do yet? Well, that's, yeah. So we, I mean, we have category five storms right. and this one is a category four. It could become a category five br briefly, but perhaps, but, you know, category five is actually wide open at the end and already we've had a much storms uh, over in the Pacific. Um, uh, th there's one that, uh, you know, just went through, uh, you know, near the Philippines, in fact. And uh, there was one that uh, hit Japan uh, fairly recently. And so um, th the big typhoons are, are bigger than some of the hurricanes that we've had in the Atlantic. So uh, um, these things are already, uh, to some extent, a, a reality. And uh, it's uh, there's a large element of chance as to just where these storms go, uh, where they hit. Uh, a lot of that depends upon the weather, the, the weather situation, where the jet stream is, where the cold fronts are, and, and so on like that. And so there's a, a, certainly a, a, an element of chance involved in all of these things, but the, the risk of these storms being more intense, uh, somewhat bigger, and with uh, really uh, heavy rainfalls, and in coastal regions, of course, also the storm surge matters a lot, uh, and, and that's because the sea level is higher as well, uh, in part because of climate change. And so all of these factors are ones which we need to start taking notice of. Well, Kevin Tremberg, thank you so much for joining us today on The Real News Network. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Uh, we needed the information. appreciate you sharing it with us. Thank you. You're welcome. Take care. Have a lovely day. Thank and I'm Mark Steiner here for The Real News Network. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll stay on top of this for us all. Take care.